the series and kind of what's on your mind leading into it? Yeah, just previewing another SEC series, right? And this this one happens to be a rival. I guess what I'm thinking about is, hey, all the players, all the coaches in our league. What makes our league so special is the opportunities that you get <clears throat> and the experiences that you get. Uh, we've had that for eight weeks. You get to play the number one team in America a couple of times. You get to play on the road, some of the best venues in college baseball. Uh, I think of our Arlington trip and the opportunities to where you know, being a team in this league affords you the opportunity to compete in something like that. So I think about our players and where they're at. Uh, <clears throat> we positioned ourselves well. Every team in our league still fighting these last two weeks for something. That's what makes it special. And then you get to play your last series in, at home, and it's against your rival uh, here at Plainsman Park. I can't think of anything better. These guys have the exams out of the way. They're, at, they're minor league baseball players now. And um, so I think that affects preparation. I think gives us an opportunity to put energy in those hours lifted by class to be put into even more preparation for your opponent. Uh, we tried to reset on Monday as a group, just talking about everything that we've been through. Um, <clears throat> this is a unique time of the year where it's all team focused. It should always be, but now more than ever because it doesn't matter if you're trying to hit a certain average or getting a certain amount, a certain amount of hits. It doesn't matter if you haven't hit enough. It doesn't matter if you have the worst ERA on the pitching staff. If you have a chance to pitch now, everything's kind of a clean slate, if you will, but everything is focused on our team and how good we could get in the stretch. I, I told him about that Kentucky Derby winner of weaving in and out like all these weeks of the league and then he finds the rail. And you can position yourself well, but if he doesn't kick it in there at the end, you never hear his name. He not only positioned himself well, he absolutely kicked it in for the stretch pull it out. That's where we're at. And uh, this is all team. This is uh, <clears throat> against your rival, which is going to feel just like another SEC weekend with a little added more because of our world. Uh, but it's a great time not to think about yourself and to think about this team. And, you know, wake up here and seven more opportunities to, to see where we're at and see what's before us. But it's, it's, in, it's in the moment and it's all about the team. What kind of team is Alabama bringing to the place of park this weekend? Yeah, very similar. If I talk to people outside of our world, with, if I take my blinders off and try to research and talk to other coaches, scouts, I mean, I'll talk to the mailman if he's seen them play enough. Um, I think it's a similar team than two hours. Um, uh, Williamson at first base is having a nice year. Denton's been a good hitter. Uh, Diodati's played well against us in the past. There's definite threats, power. Uh, we have the older Jarvis, the shortstop. His older brother played for us. We recruited him in our first recruiting class. When we got here, as a steady player, top of the lineup, uh, a pest in the best possible respect of just battling in pitches, putting the ball in play. Uh, the last eight games, a couple of guys that have really picked it up. Uh, Caden Rose was a center fielder last year as a freshman. He's really hitting the baseball good right now uh, for them. Uh, Pinkney. Uh, is a plus plus runner, is an outfielder, corner outfielder that has really come on. I know the last eight games he's leading them in hitting, and those were a couple of young players last year. Looks like they've just come on even more and more. Um, <clears throat> competitive starters, and probably a higher percentage of strike throwers when you start talking about average of the SEC. I think they're above that. And uh, the Friday night starter is a, a competitive junior college guy that's going to be able to, or has been able to pitch down throw a ton of strikes and compete with you. So uh, <clears throat> I think that's one thing that Gabe will be talking to our hitters is uh, let's strap it on, which you have to every time, but this guy's going to really, really compete with you. I think that's good to, to get those flowing. Uh, we're excited to have Blake back and him getting a throw against Troy the other night. Well, I think that makes us all feel great. Um, <clears throat> they have Dylan Ray is, is a back end guy, middle 90s, got a breaking ball to go with it with the big arm, so they're just like every other team in this league. If you find yourself down late, there's a guy that can absolutely, is talented enough to go get the last three to six outs. So uh, as I start looking around, I see more similarities than I see differences. With having Blake back after missing a couple of weeks, how much stronger do you guys feel about that bullpen now because of the guys you had to go to in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I think we found some pieces, I think. 
you know, Blake come in the eighth inning. I got, I dropped him in the game with two outs to not make him have to work too much. Hopefully, that was the design. <clears throat> but it looked like he was just kind of steering and still finding those first couple of pitches. So he came in after the eighth and really won the ninth inning. So we, we actually threw him against Troy to, one, feeling better about that he's ready to pitch. But then it starts being that sharpness deal. And he really wanted to go back out, thought he needed to, to throw some hitters in the ninth. And, and uh, it got better and better. Even the last pitch was the best pitch. He drove a fastball down and away to perfection. And uh, he started feeling like he was uh, being himself. So that, that gives us a great shot in the arm. But by having him not available, uh, again, another guy stepped up like a Carson Swilling. Uh, so like Chase Isabel starting to come. Uh, John Armstrong, that's one of the best outings we've had in weeks. And he's been working for seven weeks to, to rebound and get his head in the mitt and stay connected with his delivery. Uh, all that was, was was really good work. And, and hopefully you get Blake back, but you also feel like you have bolstered and strengthened some things as well. I think Chase also is continuing as a true freshman to be competitive, and he has enough experience and stuff now. It's like, all right, I don't care how you've done, back to my opening statement but you have enough experience now to have success. And so those are four guys that I point to that are that are ready. I think uh, <laughs> Skipper and Burkhalter are kind of package deal. So I think it's kind of like not having your mate around with you and getting the boys back together, I think makes them both better. And that's, uh, that helps That helps us. Does, does Skipper need a little rest or anything? Or you just think that's <clears throat> something he's got to fight through? And that's something that we talk about. I think the, the two times a weekend, if that can be curved into one outing, uh, but absolutely, I'm prepared for him to pitch. Uh, I don't think anything triggers for me about using Skipper until after the first time he's pitched this weekend. Uh, if that's a realistic answer, an honest answer, uh, I think we're good to go. We've had another week. Um, it's kind of like running a race, right? And you can tell <clears throat> I avoid the running uh, a pretty good bit. But I, I just know as you're training and, and running, and it's like, oh, a little stick in your side and it's like the bears on your back and then at some point if you keep running you get there's a second wind uh, that'll happen uh, and this is another week uh, where skipper did not throw in the midweek to hopefully give him an entire week to recover and try to find that second win i know i'm interested in being right on time with that when when he gets it um, but i'm definitely interested i'm not holding him out he's going to get an outing and then We'll evaluate the second one after the first one. And how about Hayden Mullins? How's he looking? Yeah, he'll start throwing tomorrow. Uh, I still think he's doubtful to, to not mislead our, our fans and our people. Um, we'll, we'll throw him, but we'll be tremendously cautious. Um, we've taken a look at everything. We'll throw him back and probably not try to even build him back up as a starter. Can he come back and give us one inning out of the bullpen? I think that's more realistic to report on right now. And then. Uh, Long term, we'll see once the season's over. But I think right now, what they're, what we are trying to do is to allow him to start throwing. He has not thrown since that outing at Tennessee, and give him an opportunity to see if he can ramp it back up, feel good enough to help us out of the bullpen. If not, then we'll just shut it down for the season. And that's where we're at with with Hayden.